Hi all, welcome to another Bantaplex, Chess 24. It's about 11.30 a.m. UK time. So I'm just waiting for my preview screen. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, voucher code. You can get a whopping 15% off with this voucher code. King's Crusher, as you can see there. And so you can challenge me and other streamers, including even the world chess champion, Magnus Carlsen. So great opportunities there and other grandmasters, etc. Okay, let's go to the challenge view. Now. And... What have I done? Uh -huh. Here comes my challenge views. Sorry about this. Uh -huh. uh, just I'll just quickly shuffle my my windows. <laughs> Pardon me. Okay, I'm hoping the challenge view is <laughs> slightly better now. Okay, I think I'm starting with. Don, who had a fantastic game last week, and uh, try and get revenge against Don. Okay, let's try C4. I hope audio and visual is now okay. Okay. Um, maybe D4 here. I wonder if a Catalan, okay, C takes. Try and play solid with E3 here. I'm not sure I particularly like Grunfeld's first thing. Uh, Bishop D3. I don't know if Don is booked up on the Grunfeld. The Grunfeld's very. Theoretical. Um, and okay, is he going to take on C3 or okay, I say Queen's Pawn scenario. And the Bishop C2 and Queen D3 at some point. Or here. <laughs> uh, just to try and provoke some weaknesses over there. This looks like a standard thing to do. And A3 is often useful for stopping knight B4. Uh, looks pretty standard thing to do so far. Uh, so provoking some dark square weaknesses, I would hope, with G6 and uh, put some pressure on. The pawn chain. Do I need a rook? I hope I need a rook there. I hope it's useful. I'm thinking h4, h5, hg, maybe a rook e6 at some point. Blast through the pawn chain. There's a Raymond Keen immortal in an isolated queen's pawn, which is inspiring. If, if you haven't seen it, it's well worth checking out. Uh, I'm going to try and undermine this pawn chain with h4. I think this is a legitimate way of playing this. Uh, well, I'd hope so. Okay, queen back. Okay, that's interesting. d5 looks pretty tempting here. Uh, this isolated queen's pawn, if you can liberate it, sometimes it liberates the pieces quite well. G4 here seems almost tempting. There's knight G7. Rook AD1. Maybe Rook AD1. Okay. Queen G5. What about D takes? Isn't that hitting the bishop? Hold on a sec. Isn't that a blunder? I'm hitting that bishop. But 
doesn't look entirely without downside bishop d6 um, so that does seem a last move sort of blunder in a way uh, okay so is bishop f4 going to be played Mind you d it looks horrible after ef um doesn't it hmm this looks as though something's gone wrong for the black pieces but okay some further technical investigation may be needed here so for example uh, bishop f4 i'm not sure this is a disaster ef because of queen f7 mind you rook takes e8 check queen takes then bishop takes f4 so if the king has to take well there's queen d5 check here if bishop e6 rook e6 and then queen a8 yes i think ef is strong now i think f4 is actually a liability so queen d5 check here so rook e6 now or maybe bishop takes f4 first I don't want to lose that um, bishop on h6. So I'm wondering bishop takes f4 first. And uh, then, so I'm hitting the queen. There's also a threat of knight g5 check. If queen takes knight g5 check, gives me queen e6. If knight takes, okay, knight g5 check here. All right, yeah, I think that was just the last move blunder. But uh, well done to Don. Beat me last week at, at least. <laughs> so anyway, until next week. <laughs> Jetsal. Okay. Uh, hello. So Jetsal is also a very, very dangerous player in the past. Very, very difficult games. Um, Underrated, I would say. Uh I'll try c5 here. Oh, okay, we've got this scenario where white seems to be willing to give up the light square bishop, I suspect, after bishop b5. But, um, uh, okay, I'll close in my own bishop for the moment. I suspect... Um, there's pressure here. Can I play e takes or is there too much pressure? Maybe bishop e6 on castling queenside. It is a little bit scary. Perhaps queen a5 and bishop b4. Bishop b4, queen takes b4. I, I think I need queen a5. Uh, if I can get away with this. Uh, so bishop b4 next. Or I could consider castling queenside. Is that too dangerous? I'm wondering, do I get smashed in the meantime if I played, for example, rook he1, bishop b4? Is there knight takes d5? Knight takes d5. Queen takes d5. Well, it is scary. I could take on b5 here. I guess. Or just play rook c8. Maybe, maybe just rook c8. For the moment. Not trying to be flash. It might... I think it might backfire. Queen e5, knight d4, rook d4. There's a knight sitting there. It would have been threatening knight c7. Okay, I think that was dangerous. Can I play bishop b4 now? Or am I getting in big trouble? Oh, I hope not. Is there knight d5? Knight d5, queen d5. Maybe I, I just castle there because 
if I play bishop before knight d5, knight d5, queen d5, if bishop takes, queen d7 check, king f8, and then takes the rook. So maybe I just castle that. Okay, I'll be content with being able to castle here after knight d5, knight d5, queen d5, castle, sack a pawn. I'm hitting the rook. Uh, bishop takes c6. He could actually get the queens off because he'd be hitting my queen. Pawn takes, queen takes. Oh, it goes on. I don't know if it's worth calculating any further than that. But let's have a look again just for a moment. Knight d5. Is that is there actually bishop takes e1? Because if that bishop's not pinning there, knight f6, g6, the bishop's guarding d7 there. Okay, now here, queen b5, knight takes, knight takes, nope. Let's castle. Okay, that helps me somewhat, I hope, to be able to play c5 and d4. Uh, c5 and d4, or bishop a3 here is very, very tempting. Okay, uh, queen takes is plausible. Um, if queen takes, then bishop takes b2. Uh, like, I don't believe I'm a piece down or anything. It's it's okay. I hope. Fanny, okay. Let's play this. Pawns. Okay, there's a fragmentation on both sides. Probably worse for me structurally right now. Worse for me structurally. Oh well. Okay, knight b6 here. That's c4 target. Do I want to play c5? Okay, knight going back. To, that doesn't seem a bad knight to have. I guess bishop a5 trying to drive me off c6. Hmm, can I can I get away with f6 here? For the discovery, there's bishop f5 check anyway on the bishop. Uh, knight c6, rook c6 anyway. Okay, so I'll play this bishop f5 check. I've got two minor pieces which don't seem that bad. There's some common square here on b1. Um, knight e6, okay, knight e6, rook bb7. French thing, rook b1 mating. Ah, okay, he's going to seal that bishop. Bishop d3, just to keep the bishop alive. Oh, there's rook a3, no, rook b1. So knight c6, after rook b7, rook b1 is mating. That might be somewhat dangerous. Bishop e3. Let's say this position with rook bb7. Bishop e3. Is it bishop e3? Or is there something else? Um, c6 is dropping here. Uh, it seems if I'm not mating, and the bishop moves to give d2 for the king. Right. 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 <laughs> rook b2 for rook g2 is allowing knight c6. Um, uh, that's a bit of a liability. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, uh, what about King F7 for a moment? Hold on, King F7. So there's no Knight C6. Well, then the e3. 
Oh, there's a king d2. But then bishop e4 hits the rook. Or, all right, thanks, Jetzel. Yeah, got a bit tactical there. Okay, Olaf. By the way, I have good news to report on Friday. My 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 club, Barnet Elizabethans, won the Capes Trophy, the 60th Capes Trophy. I had to play two IMs. I got one out of two against the IMs, being Richard Bates, losing to Nicholas Pert. So I had five out of seven on board one, playing for Barnet Elizabethans. Uh, so the team won 160 quid, actually. There was a prize fund, a big prize fund. There was a huge amount of entrance. It was probably the strongest ever capes trophy so thanks for all the five minute practice every sunday i think it came in handy except there is a difference between over the board five minute and online i managed to play an illegal move which is against the rules you just lose instantly if the opponent claims it without pressing the clock if they add another illegal move to it i actually got my king to be taken but if i uh, i was i was I was uh, embarrassed by that in round six, and then I got mashed in round seven. But thankfully, because of the previous games, uh, we still won the tournament anyway. So on the individual matches, so it was a four-board team, myself, Tom Vidias, Alex Eflontis, Roy Royce. We didn't actually lose any match. We had a strong Hackney team. So these are all the strong five-minute you know clubs in, in London. Hackney, Chingford was supercharged, I am Nicholas Per on board one, David Hayden on board two, Costas Carrion on board three, supercharged team and a sort of 180 on board four, which maybe proved to be their slight Achilles heel. Because uh, when we won 4 0, we won 4 0 in a few games, and that really uh, got our points up because it was like a bonus point, I think, for winning if you could win 4 0. So that helped having a solid overall team. Um, but yeah, I was really, really happy with Friday. So it was like preliminary round four, five minute games. I got three and a half out of four in the preliminaries. Knight C3 is threatened. And then five out of seven in the uh, the main bet. Uh, so I had I beat Richard Bates with a dodgy bishop sack in one game with black. Uh, beat David Sands with white is about 200. Beat a couple of other 200s. Yeah, it was a pretty difficult event. I, I, I thought when we got that, I just thought it was a normal club event. When we got there, you know, you know, quite a few IMs kicking around, FMs kicking around, much more dangerous than usual. The Capes Trophy on Friday night, much more dangerous. Ah, <laughs> uh, cool, man. Uh, okay, so yeah, that was fun. Um, uh, So I'm trying to avoid getting mated here. A3. I might do a quick. I've got a bit of video footage, but also the prize ceremony was video footage. I might be able to hopefully grab hold of that, put it on the King's Crusher channel at some point soon. But yeah, um, that was, uh, it's five minutes is a lot of fun. Those tournaments, those team tournaments. Uh, okay. Is Bishop D2 plausible here? Or not? C five. Bishop D two. Not really sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not convinced. I'm giving up. D five here voluntarily. Is it possible? Oh, hang on. This is getting really dangerous. To avoid getting mated. Uh, hang on, he's got two pieces hanging after that. B and D6. Isn't that blunder? Yeah, in one game, I had to find a real tent. I thought I was done for, and I found this counter frat move to my queen, and it saved the day. Unbelievable. I was shocked. It saved the day, to be honest. I thought I was getting blasted in one of the games for sure. But yeah, sometimes finding a saving resource. Is all you need. Hmm. Oh, thanks, Olaf. Yeah, that was a last move blunder. So you've very dangerous opponent there. Um, 
I am a coach. Okay. Okay. No, I don't want to leave the game. Okay. Hi there. And okay. Here we go. I'll try and play um, King's Engine Defense or something. Oh, is it anti London or this thing again with C5, whatever this is? And, uh, I, I feel I should play C5 generally. Uh, is DC going to be played? Now, with the Knight C3, I wouldn't normally be enamored by this basic classical setup, but I feel in these circumstances with knight c3 without the added pressure on the center that I think I can get a reasonable game with this classic setup I have voluntarily hemmed in my own bishop for the moment however there might be some upsides to this uh, springing the bishop on the light squares later Okay, here I think bishop f4, bishop d6. Would I just lose a pawn with knight c5? Yes, that might be the case. Okay. Um, so am I in trouble? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't really want to lose a pawn for nothing. But it seems as though he's pushing me to lose a pawn. Okay, I'm losing a pawn because of knight c5. Yeah, that's a shame. Knight e8 for f6. Is, have I got an idea of e5 at least to try and generate some counterplay or not? Any like aggressive could take here. I don't know. <clears throat> don't know about all this. I give g7. I think I've seen even Kramnik play like this occasionally with g5. Uh, I mean, he can be a mad hacker sometimes. Uh, I have lost that pawn. Okay. I'm hoping queen g7 is useful. g4. Try and get something going over here. f5 or h h5 maybe. Is it possible f5 is handy? I don't know if I'm, I'm getting a really killed bishop on c8 right now. Oh, my bishop on c8 is going to be suffering. On the other hand, oh, okay. Well, actually, isn't there a check? I'm going to take the knight on c5 here. The check, anyway. If I took on c5, he's got queen g4, but I'm definitely taking out this pawn. Looks tempting for ef, at least. Uh, to guard. Uh, to ask that knight to move. Uh, sort of liberates the bishop. Yeah, I don't like um, the idea of all these checks so I don't know where they lead I'd rather not take the piece just yet I'm happy to liberate the bishop I thought that was going to be a dead bishop there for a moment uh, maybe in fact to celebrate the bishop being alive bishop a6 here around about here bishop a6 or f5 f4 F4 is also tempting for Bishop F5. 
or Bishop A6. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, I'm going to go with Bishop A6. I, it feels like a lottery to try and decide the trade-offs there of both moves. F4, for, because, I don't know, it just feels like some sort of weird lottery. I can't work it out. Let's just play for Knight E4 here. This looks as though it's better than what I should have had. I'm stopping Knight C5. There's a threat of knight f2. I can't complain of this position, surely. f4, f3. This looks very, very good compared to before. Taking out that center pawn seems to have liberated the position. It's very hard sometimes to work out the uh, trade offs if you've got a favorable imbalance or not. It's very, very hard in these, I, I find, in these, um, yeah. So, uh, this looks fairly easy to play, though. Uh, so f2 is now a threat. Looks, yeah, because I got a dangerous pass pawn, I think he's under pressure here. Uh, this diagonal could be good for that bishop if the king has to go to that. Well, there's knight f2 anyway. Hmm. Can I play rook e7 for rook g7? Is that dangerous? He doesn't really want to open up my bishop, does he? So I'm reserving f2 as well as a major threat. If he opens up the bishop, and he, you know, if he takes that, I get the whole diagonal. Um, f2 might be worth playing. I, should I be calculating this? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's let's try for something. Knight g3 for f1. If he took on e7 f1, surely dc e4 dropping off. But knight g3 pushing for f1 is looking like a piece but is there anything better than that um i think it's sort of clearish no it's not apparently okay um Ah, oh. I think there's a bishop h3 trap on rook f2. Let's hit this knight for a moment. Try and get this bishop on e6. Try and hit some pawns on knight squares. Oh, uh, no, actually. Uh, back in a mess now. Okay. Um, try and get C4. Alright, there's 2 to 1 over there. The end games might be good for the bishop. Okay, um, can I get to A4? It's almost pre move time as well. Can I get to play A4? Oh, let me have that. Well, I think we have a draw here, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll play. It. That was difficult, yeah. 
Oh, I thought I had uh, some chances. <laughs> Might have messed that up. Might have messed up that position. Yeah, it looked good actually at one point. I don't know. I don't know if I messed that up. Uh, let's try and accept the challenge here. Uh -huh. Okay, is that Clint Eastwood? That's a picture of Clint Eastwood. Classics. Spaghetti weapon, uh, westerns. Or as I call them, uh, macaroni westerns. <laughs> so, yeah. Must see the uh, spaghetti westerns, if you haven't. And uh, Good, Bad and Ugly, one of my favourites. Okay, so one elephant, two elephants, three elephants. Four elephants, five elephants, six elephants, seven elephants, eight horses, actually, spaghetti western horses, nine horses, ten horses. Okay, I'll go on to another challenge now. All the time. Cobra. Okay, so Cobra. Is Cobra around? Yes. I'll try a Dutch defense just for fun. I'll try and play Stonewall, Dutch Stonewall. I wonder if Knight C6 though, just to throw White off the normal sense, because I've seen I've seen Magnus Carlsen play Knight C6 blocking in. The sea pawn. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna spring in knight c6. Not to be that predictable. So if I castle and knight e4, I was discussing the Dutch defence uh, with the guys on Friday, and I. Queen e8, f5 is supported, uh, h5 is supported because of this f pawn move. You can play this crude stuff. It stems from move f5 as a perk, uh, as a sort of benefit. Um, the crude queen e8, h5. But at the moment, I'm tied to d5. Let's try and reinforce uh, d5. Uh, so here we go. Um, G five is that dangerous? Knight A five is that useful? Knight A five. G five. Bishop Bishop F six seems pretty logical, without too much controversy. Although although it might have been useful there for some tactics on this diagonal. Uh, okay, but anyway, uh, G5 now looks nice. Actually, isn't that hanging that night? Oh, my pets. The weakness of the last move. I didn't pounce on the weakness of the last move. I keep telling you, oh, second chance. Uh, there's a weakness of the last move, guys. Every time you play a move, there's a weakness. I know it's terrible, but we all have a weakness of our last move. Everyone, every single move is a weakness of the last move. <laughs> It's it's a fact. It's a fact of life. It's a, a cruel fact, uh, and it happens a lot in Blitz. This weakness of the last move. If I played Bishop D four, Bishop B two might actually get the piece back, or does it? Queen F six, E three, Knight E two, check, and then Bishop B two, Rook B one, Bishop C three. Is my Bishop stranded? I can save all this hassle, can't I? Ah, uh, you've got a queen c6. Maybe, maybe it's worth the hassle. Oh, okay. It might be worth the hassle. There is knight e2 for bishop a1 anyway here. Huh? 
Yeah, so much for... I'm telling my students to pounce on weaknesses of the last move, and I, I miss it myself. <laughs> okay, but anyway, the first time. Thanks, Cobra. Yeah, uh, a lot of online chess. I think there are a ton of opportunities in speed chess. Just just for move mechanic, move mechanics-related um, opportunities. Nothing to do with any planning, just move mechanics. So... I'm, I'm trying to identify them very clear as clearly as possible, but these move mechanic opportunities, uh, it's like SWAT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I'll call it the W of SWAT, the move mechanics, rather than the longer term plan. So we're talking um, weaknesses of the last move. Uh, actually, and um, parking space is used up. Uh, anyway, I mentioned that. Um, was another good one. Common squares that you've now got. Pieces that have now been liberated for you. Pieces that have been blocked for the opponent. Those, those are like the four main areas just on move mechanics, even if you don't have a big plan. Okay, because I've been talking like I'll do five horses, one horse or one mouse, two mouse, three mouse, or mice, <laughs> four mice. Five mice. Okay, another another time, another time. Okay, let's carry on on this queue. Uh, so, um, move mechanics. Yeah, I would call it the the. Uh, if you think of SWAT as in the, if it's a sort of business tool usually for finding opportunities, but um, strengths and weaknesses in the business would be like the people you have and the internal like resources but on the chessboard I think it's move mechanics I think it translates quite well to the last move and the opportunities there but for a bigger plan on say loose pieces and stuff I think that's the O of SWAT but um, it's something I've been playing around with as an idea um, so anyway um, okay um, again because I've been talking a bit that's one piler two pilers Three pilers, four pilers, uh, five pilers. Okay, we'll have to bought this. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, here we go. Term mopfer, term Uh All right. So what's happening here? What's happening here? <laughs> Is anyone ready today? Is anyone? <laughs> Uh, uh, I'll get out the Vogue on poetry soon. Okay. Uh, okay. One turnip, two turnips. I'm, I'm, I'm using the nickname to sort of do a, a, the, the word for the delay. Three turnips, four turnips, five turnips, six turnips, seven turnips, eight turnips, nine turnips. 10 turnips. Okay, I think I'll, I'm going to abort this. Okay, anyone ready today? Are you all somewhere else? Okay, Friedel. <laughs> okay. No, it carries on. It carries on. <laughs> okay, Friedel is ready, of course, with the, Lo the dreaded London system. Oh, yeah. Thanks. 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 It's a very, very common weapon of choice nowadays. The London system is all the rage at the moment. Who would have thought? Ah. Okay. Okay, we've seen this before. So we've had this position a few times now before. This is becoming a start position. I'll put the bishop on e7. I think that's more flexible than g7. So it's a sort of French defense kind of thing going on here. And I'm going to play, I think, queen a5 as a sort of support for b4 later. This queenside avalanche. I'm also supporting d5. So I'm playing it like a sort of French defense, which I don't mind. As I have played the French defence in the past. Uh, 
you know what? I'm thinking the B4 is not right for the queen here. Uh, it's not right for the queen, is it? My king's still in the center. Maybe bishop d7 is a cautious move. To be able to castle at some point. All right, this cements a c4 pawn at least. Okay, he's got a4. I don't mind going back here. French defense style. Now, will he lock this side of the board? Do I play a5 here, I wonder? And live to tell the tell. Two rooks for a queen there. Or knight takes a5. If queen takes two rooks for a queen, I'm not sure it's worth it. I think knight a5. <laughs> or rook a5. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to play rook a5. Ah. Uh. I'm hoping I do not get tactically blown away from this position just because I haven't cancelled. Rook b1, I think I can just take and then castle. Hmm. This seems pleasant enough. Queen b2 seems pleasant enough. Why is queen b2 being invited? Why, why, why? Aha, uh -huh, I see. I see now. It's better to see these things sometimes before playing the move. I have to bring my king up over there, I think. Unless, can I hit? I need a knight on b5, like a6, d6, c7, b5 to hit c3. Get the other one to a4. All right, get my king up there or something. b6 to, and then bishop a4. So if I took and then knight a3, knight a4, uh huh. And can I do something with my king over here with g5? Try and get an active king. Now h5, king h5, g3, king g4. Okay, he's giving me an active king. There's also knight b5, hold on. Right, active king. I'll try and collect another trump card. Mobile pawn center with uh, f6, pair f6, or active king, first king f4, or f6 immediately check, is it that big a deal? 
Maybe it was. It's an E5 square. Uh, okay. Um, give him the E5 square. All right. So it's a sort of active king. Uh, can I do anything with it? H4 for H3. Can I do something with my knights or not? Knight d6. My knights are more central, surely, than the one on a2. Can I not use my more central knights? Okay, can I use this knight over here to do something? Knight g4. Or oh, this one, can I get that back? Maybe not. Ah, okay. I'm down to 33 seconds. This is looking like trouble. Uh oh. I think, first of all, I'm down on the clock. That's one issue. Oh, I, I do accept a draw if there's a draw. <laughs> oh, no, I accept it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to not accept the draw. Because uh, nothing, I'm making no progress. Okay, thanks for that generous draw offer. You know, we'll play. Uh, yeah, I, for some reason, Queen B, I just, I could, it must be too good to be true to play Queen B2. Yeah, so I'm, I should have looked a bit harder. Uh, perhaps. Okay, that I, 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 okay, hey, yeah, well played, well played. It's, it's complicated stuff, isn't it? Chess, okay. <sighs> Mark Zilla. Um, so. Mark, one mark, <laughs> two marks, three marks, four marks, five marks, six marks, seven marks, eight marks, nine marks, ten marks. Okay, I think I have to abort. Nick Tail. Okay. Maybe I have to conjure up some more anti London systems just for a bit of variety, not to be so predictable. <laughs> uh, some new anti London systems. Uh, I think I might do try and do a video anti London system at some point uh, or multiple a multi series yeah multi video series it's so, it seems to be all the rage 
yeah, all levels. I'm pretty predictable here. Oh, I was going to go for this kind of sack. On a tree. It works against the IM on Friday anyway. This kind of bishop H3. It's, I think, two aspects to it. Even if it's not sound, it uses up a lot of time on the clock. I think it's looking dangerous here anyway. Okay, knight h4, bishop f3. It it's looking well dangerous after h5 and knight g4. It looks well dangerous to me because I actually stopped bishop g2 with this knight h4 move. So h5 and knight g4 looks exceptionally dangerous. Exceptionally dangerous. Actually, mating is queen g3, it seems. And bishop g2, queen g2, that's just simply mating, I think. Yeah, it's a bit of my pet system here. It's my pet killer system. Won quite a few bullet tournaments online with this tango. I think also dangerous was knight g4, in fact. But this one is just more optimal. Doctor Optimum, I think it's more optimal. Queen. Okay. Thanks. It's how, yeah, he just went into my pet system there. Uh, okay. Me. So this looks like a King's Indian, which is a version of the King's Indian, which white isn't slaughtering black on the Queen side just yet. So F4 is threatened. Um, yeah, I think F4. Queen D3 check, there's Bishop F5. Oh, yeah. Okay, thanks, Tremi. Yeah, that was a bit of a blunder. Yeah, okay. Uh, the Crippled King. I'll play e4 for a bit of variety. I could bore you with in the English opening. <laughs> no, that can be exciting as well. I just want a bit of opening variety for you guys to try and make things unpredictable to some extent. Okay, I like having a bishop without a counterpart. What to do with it? Bishop e3 looks tempting for bishop d6. Just a positional bind, if nothing else. Then, say, e5, bishop d3. Nice positional bind with dark square bishop. Blockade. Um, I hope e5 runs into knight f5 though, so I have to be careful. That's a liability piece as well. Uh, g3 h4 knight g5 looks 
like a plan. Oh, oh, that's a shame. I might have to take on G6 hair to keep the bind. Okay, probably worth doing here. I'm thinking um, if I have knight g5 and the queen on h4, it'd be dangerous even without the line square bishop. Um, losing c3, I don't think that's a huge consequence. Um, so I'd rather have rook e1, queen c3. I lose c3, but I get try and get the position where I've got knight on g5 and queen on h4. So knight g5, queen g4 to h4. I see the candidate moves after as something I just don't I don't like analyzing as such. I like the ideas more than the calculation. So it's, I treat this as a sort of interface to get to where I want. Basically, the moves, the actual concrete moves. But not I would I, I don't try and yeah for this sort of position it's a nice bind. I just know where I want to get to. So dropping c3 okay it's a pawn sack. Uh, on the other hand, this this scenario, there's always h6. Maybe it's not that bright that scenario. The bind inspires me. Uh, okay, discourages rook f8 as well. But if I got that position with a knight on g5 and a queen on h4, there's just h6. I'll I'll go for it anyway for a moment. If h6 here, this is interesting. Hmm. Yes. h6 here. He's eyeing my rook as well. Alright, if he doesn't play h6, queen f3 is on f7. That's actually concrete danger. I think he might need to play h6 because whatever happens if knight e5 protecting f7 there's always bishop e5 and then queen f7 so if h6 isn't played it looks as though queen f3 is dangerous if h6 is played then I don't know oh that's another way I see of defending f7 but this is mega dangerous I'll be threatening bishop c7 here with tempo on the queen aha uh -huh. try and provoke some weaknesses with queen h3 then Okay, so queen g3. Oh, this isn't looking that rosy. No. Ah, okay. It's not that rosy. The bishop's still a bit bad. I've got pressure on g6. Uh, All right, let's just play for knight e5, I think. Or knight d4 to b5, which gives me knight c7. Is that any good? I think I'd, li I'd rather keep the queens on. We queen b3 on that diagonal. Just in case there's a knight e6 and d7 later or something like that. If I play g3 to give my king, okay, f3 to give the king air. Ah. Or g3. Knight b5 here. Okay, I'm not convinced by my position now. Uh, maybe I should be. I can't see it concretely. 
what is the point here? All right, there's knight c7 though here. No. That's something at least. Hitting the rook, hitting the bush up. Now the queen's eyeing c1. I've got to be careful with my rooks. So bishop e2. I've got to be careful with the rooks. Uh huh. All right. I think I'll take that exchange and try and stop g4. That would be a nice undermining move. Uh, queen c4 or rook c4 maybe rook c4 and try and get the queens off There's a tactic here, rook c6, if he's not careful. D7, king's too far. Alright, thanks for the game. Yeah, that was, that was interesting. Chess Cadet. Okay, Chess Cadet. Hi there, chess cadet. It's a three minute game. Um, so this is, uh, I like this position. Uh, especially on faster time controls it's useful to have seen the position before uh, okay so f5 plan as usual uh, f5 f5 friends f4 i can't don't know anything more lucrative with the black pieces than to have a an attacking position free of charge like this um, uh, maybe knight e5 to avoid the queens coming off or f4 here I'll play like this Okay, I don't mind a knight coming to e5. If it's with tempo, I've got f4, f3 after that. I think f4 is not playable just yet. So I'm playing for knight f4. Or knight h4 here looks pretty dangerous. In the circumstances, I'm on g2 there's no queen g3 so that's pretty dangerous in the circumstances okay so yeah that looks like a fatal flaw move actually it's got a fatal flaw It's giving that huge tempo, nine eight four. 
Well, I think I'll take it. I'm on G2 and D3 here. Alright, thanks for the game, Jessica. That's okay. Kasparov fan. Ah, uh, right. Kasparov fan. Oh, maybe. Okay, bit of variety here. I sort of. I think I've been looking at Boris Spassky recently. He, I think he liked his um, King's Fianchetto as well. King's Fianchetto. So King H2, F4, G4, that sort of thing. Knight G3, G5, blah, blah, blah. Knight G3 coming up. G5, nice space gain over here. If I can get it, kick this knight. Although, could I have just won a piece with e5? That was a bit casual of me because bishop g2, ef. Maybe I could have just won a piece just then. Oh well. Okay, there's a fast tempo to this game being set. Bit too fast, maybe, for accuracy. Any accuracy. Um, hmm, bishop e3, knight d2, or queen h5. Maybe queen h5 just to provoke g6. If I can provoke g6. Queen h4 looks as though I'm blocking my h pawn, but I'm just wondering for a moment if it's worth it for f4, f5 later. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll go with this. Giving up the e5 square trade offs. Mm, uh huh. D4, just kick this guy because I can. F6 and knight F5 looks forcing. All right, this my diagonal is uh, vulnerable. This diagonal. Ah, uh, okay, there's some other vulnerabilities as well. No, my my king doesn't look right here. It's right a target on diagonal and for knight f4. Um, king h2, f6 is not doing anything too quick, is it? Uh, knight a3 looks terrible, but I'm going to defend c2 surely. Maybe knight b5 later. It's not that bad if I have knight b5 later. This F6. Or King H2 or Rook F3. Maybe out of that lot, I think Rook F3. To double the Rooks at least. Oh, which gives me F6. If you ever plays F6, G6. If you ever plays H6, Bishop H6. So I, I think I want to play doubling the Rooks and then F6. That looks like a plan. I, I, uh, yeah. Rook A F one F six looks like a plan. Is 
Is it a plan? Okay, so F6, there's G6. How about G6 instead trying to undermine the pawn chain? That looks too cozy, F6, G6. I think I'd rather play it like this. This looks reasonably dangerous. I haven't got queen d5 because of knight d5. Um, but I might have some other goodies here. Queen f5 for queen f7 for queen f8 at some point. Okay, not the way he's playing it. Okay, rook d3 is threatened. Also knight h5 for rook f8 for queen g7. Uh, there's any right rook e2, king h1. I'll be threatening rook f8 there. If queen e7, maybe there's rook f7. All right, there is just rook d3. It looks sort of simple and strong in some respects. Isn't knight f5 dangerous? Queen e2 check. No. Actually, I'm tempted just to play knight h5. So queen e2, king h1. I'll be threatening rook f8. I like that tactic. Cause I've covered a Spassky tactic like that recently with rook f8. So I'm attracted to knight h5 and rook f7. Even though I, I see that rook d3 is probably a good move. But I'm attracted to play it to celebrate Spassky here. So knight h5 for rook f7 for rook g7. So rook f7 looks menacing. If I can get rook g7 in after. Queen e2, king h1. So the threat is rook f8, queen g7. Yeah, I think that's less clinical continuation than rook d3. I think it's more style to it. The Spassky Petrosian game I covered recently on the channel. He blasted Petrosian with possibility of taking on f8 uh, for g7. Okay, thanks, thanks for that. Okay. Okay. A three minute game, huh? Can I get to play Knight of Six? If I can get to play Knight of Six. Oh, Rook G8 for Rook G4. There's also something to think about. Oh, Queen C5 for Bishop C6. I guess I better hold on to uh, f7 for a moment. Bishop c6. 
or e4. Uh, this one for rook g4. Oh, miss bishop c5. Mind you, there's bishop c6 maybe. Um, bishop f3. I'll stop this, I think. Bishop c5. Um, try and get on this diagonal or something. h5 for knight g4. Queen d8. Knight d5 just hit his queen. You could just take that pawn, yeah. I'd like to have a nice knight on d5 here. Is f6 a move? Alright, knight e5 to f3. Outside pass pawn potential. Rookie six, I guess. There's rook f four. Let's put that on the board for a moment. He wouldn't want to move his bishop as a rookie two. Would he want to play? I was just playing for some sort of mate or something. If bishop c7, it was dangerous. Bishop b5? Oh, there's rook b6. What about a3 here for a2? a2 here looks winning. Was, is it not? It's giving me a queen for nothing. Okay, thanks for the game. I, I really wouldn't mess with me on three minute chess because I'm even stronger on three minute and even stronger bullet. I really don't care. If you're an IM, I really have good results. Uh, just a word of warning. Yeah. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so knight f6, bishop c5. This is hanging. Okay, so check. Now knight g4, bishop takes, knight f2. Is a discover check to win the queen. I'll take this guy. Queen, this is a standard mate pattern. Queen g3 to take and then queen h4. So HG Queen H four. Right, offense the game, Michael. 
Gogin pool three minute game. Okay, okay, you guys, you want to test me? <laughs> you want to test me on the faster time limit? Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Try and make this a gambit. Is he accepting the gambit? He's not, is he? He is. He is. Let's not move the king. Otherwise, this isn't going to be pretty. I have to move the king. All right, knight f5. Rookie 8, knight f5. All right, f5 to sign, try and suppress e4. Okay, king h8 for knight eight, not knight h4, f4. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Queen F six this runs into knight d five F four E four however that might be there might be some upside here E four Bishop G four for example is he playing for E five is he getting a big pawn center somehow I think there's something that I can play in this position after E four e4 okay so bishop g4 here okay so if I took and then took on h4 okay I have some dark square play. I can threaten mates. Or oh, that standard mating pattern with bishop h2, bishop g3. So sealing off the exit square. Alright, thanks for the game, Gorgin. Okay, getting to play quite a few games today. At City Mid On. Cricket. Nice picture. Okay. Let's have a look at that again. City Mid On. Alright, he's using his head as a sort of. Yeah, that's a bad position, it seems. Alright, uh, one cricket. Two crickets, three crickets, four crickets, five crickets, six crickets, seven crickets, eight crickets. Ah, all right. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> Austrian attack. <laughs> no, really. I, I, when I see this, was I shouldn't. I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> I do wonder. There's a stem game. Uh, Nakamura beat this GM. And he just sacked this knight on c3, and it that idea dates earlier to another very dangerous attacking player, Vladimirovich. Uh, I think Andrew Martin told me Vladimirovich. So there's these attacking ideas of losing the knight on c3 to get a vicious h file attack, uh, which is very very dangerous. And a crowd pleaser at the same time. Okay, so <laughs> if <laughs> Bishop C four and Knight G five threatens mate, uh, okay, 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 okay. Let's see, Knight G five H six. Uh, and this is better with rook h7. I don't know, maybe rook h7, knight g5, king moves, king f2 with the threat of rook h1. I'm tempted, I'm tempted. Uh, rook h7, knight g5, king moves to h8, king f2 for queen h1. It, it looks like a good laugh in some respects to try and play like that. 
<clears throat> so I'll do it. Let's hope I'll still be laughing in a moment. <clears throat> okay, let's imagine Bishop H6. Okay, I think Bishop H6 was a critical test. Uh, for King G7, yeah, maybe I would have had problem with Bishop H6. What does the computer say about this? Let's have a look at the computer. Thanks. Um, equal. No, white is winning. The computer likes this. Computer computer says yes. The computer says yes. <laughs> this has never happened before. The computer says yes. Hang on a sec. Knight G5. King f2. I've played uh, an accurate move, King f2. For, I just want Queen h1. As I say, this is any move is just it's just an interface, really. I, I like to see what I want to do, how to get there. You just it's an interface issue. But King f2, it's just an interface issue for Queen h1. Bishop h6, Queen h1. This is what I was a bit worried about for a moment. Oh, there's Knight e6 check here anyway. Okay, maybe I I just take the queen. It looks like a very very dangerous. <laughs> it look, uh, uh, I think this whole opening is busted with this line. I don't know. I don't know. It looks really good. This this is, <laughs> looks really good. No, the, the critical test is uh, taking the knight. This is definitely not the critical test. Okay, maybe king. F, maybe king. F, maybe this is the right way to play it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, that was a sparkling game to finish off with uh, this week. Um, uh, I pr because there's two minutes to go, but I, I should really emphasize if you did enjoy the stream and want to try and crush me next week, or Megan Skulls, and check out this uh, premium voucher code King's Crusher. Uh, so you get 15% off. Um, so premium members can do all these challenges and get other perks on the site. So uh, unprecedented tournament coverage never seen before on the other website you get all the goodies with the website um, so members to check out yeah if you're not a premium member the voucher code King's Crusher is a, is a really major thing uh, yeah thanks everyone uh, just to recap um, on on the major the checklist I mentioned from last week um, still stands for me, the SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, trying to apply it to chess. I think I'm trying to apply it to chess, I think, usefully. Uh, so for me, the W and the O. So the W, I consider the move mechanics opportunities, which are plentiful in online bullet blitz chess, plentiful, just the move mechanics. We're talking weaknesses of the last move, we'll win a ton of games or lose a ton of games. Uh, the opportunities of you know the piece liberated pieces of the last move is another one or the pieces blocked in so you get key defensive squares access to that this is all move mechanics nothing to do with any grand planning i firmly believe move mechanics in speed chess is central to check the opportunities there central uh you know parking spaces used and and common squares if you can identify common squares of pieces quickly I think that's going to give a competitive advantage where the pieces cooperate so these move mechanic issues high priority I think okay uh, thanks very much see you next week have a good weekend